Hello, I'm Philip Oliver. And I'm Andrew Oliver. And together we are the Oliver Twins. Today we're looking at Advanced Pinball Simulator, a game that we wrote back in 1988. That's 27 years ago. Um, the version that we're going to mainly be playing today is the Spectrum version, Spectrum 48K, which was probably the most successful version. Um, but we always coded first on the Amstrad CPC and then ported it over. They were actually quite similar machines under the hood. And then, in fact, somebody else, I can't remember who, wrote the Commodore 64 version and the Atari 800XL version. So, um... We've got, um, we had some, a little bit of help, if we can quickly have a look at the credits. We had Neil Adamson do the loading screen graphics and the side panel section on the Amstrad CPC version. We had David Whitaker do the music for us. He always did all of our music. And John Paul Eldridge con contributed some of the sound effects. We actually did all the in-game graphics uh, ourselves as they needed to be uh, very functional. So, let's get on with the game. I think. Absolutely. Uh, Two-player uh, mode, I believe, since there are two of us. Uh, so, oh, so, it's Andrew as player one. Let's see if I can uh, play this game. So, uh, Z for the left flipper. And M, M for the right, with space bar to pull back the plunger. So here we go. Um, the actual pinball itself, we decided to theme the table. Many pinballs um, uh, classics had a, a theme, like an Indiana Jones theme or something like that. And um, having just come off the back of the very successful uh, Dizzy games, we felt that uh, uh, a Dizzy sort of um, mish, uh, magic and haunted castle. Well, it was also was because of a popular song sort of called Pinball Wizard, but we thought. That uh, would be a bit blatant, but hey, we've got um, a story all about a wizard anyway, so uh, that sort Our of wizard gave us, axe. yeah, that gave us a good sort of reference point and reason why why it was based on uh, the magic theme. So as you're knocking down um, those cyan pins on the side, it's actually um, oh, we'll, we'll start to destroy the uh, castle in the middle. We've got at the top left, we've got the green round circles. They're actually trees. That's the forest that blocks the way to the volcano. Um, that where, where there's a potion bottle will appear up there and various other bits and pieces. So we've got those bumpers that Andrew is hitting off at the moment. Um, how are you doing? You're doing quite well there. Yep, I've just got a... Oh, 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 there you go. The potion bottle has appeared. Um, for every 10,000 uh, points, you get an extra ball, and we're going to need them, I believe. Right, I'm trying to... Oh, oh. I was going to say, I'm going to just try and play it and concentrate. Um, so, Philip's going to take over now. Uh, well, well, i tell you a bit about it. Um, I mean, it was a long time ago that we wrote this, and I remember when I was trying to program the, the physics on the ball, <laughs> laughingly calling it physics, actually, because, frankly, it was uh, all 8-bit coding, and actually, it was pretty primitive, actually, oh! if I remember. It's actually just looking at the coloured pixels on the screen as it's moving around, um, with bright attributes meaning that it's all solid, um, and dull attributes meaning it will go over the top and it was just looking at a few pixels in front of itself all the time to try to work out the angle that it needs to spring spring off which actually looking back on it i'm amazed it ever worked and looked as good as it should i mean nowadays we'd be having some sort of vector collision table um but we somehow got away with with it because it does actually yeah. play okay yeah and you have to remember with 8-bit maths where the biggest number is uh, sort of 255 um it is quite surprising that it oh. actually feels as fluid as it does. Um, it doesn't make us any better at playing the game, obviously. Um, let me see if I can uh, focus on actually get a half-decent score here. I do remember a really nasty bug that we had whereby the ball can start moving pretty fast after a while and uh, it would occasionally just shoot straight through uh, your flipper, which just felt so bad and, and cheated. And we'd kind of finished most of the game and then occasionally it would just fly really fast through the flipper. And we did... Uh, I do not believe that. 
And what we decided to do is actually just move the ball much slower and call it four times in every loop because actually the game isn't doing too much. Um, and actually that just, just fixed, the, fixed the problem. Uh, there was at there was one point we had a feature where it would actually um, throw out another ball so you'd actually have two balls in play. I can't remember play. if that's in there now. Yeah. We used to have two balls bouncing around at the time, but is that in the final version? I'm afraid I just don't know. I do know that the end game, um, if you can actually manage to complete it, um, actually has uh, the castle completely disappeared. Uh, there's a spell book opens, the potion bottle starts oh, fizzing, oh, oh, oh. the wood is completely cut down, and a small cottage appears. Oh, hang on, I've got to put my name in. So I've got a B8770. Okay. Yeah, we're actually not playing that, that well, but that's because we're busy talking whilst we're trying to play. And reminiscing. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh, man. It's really difficult to get it go up around that curve, I have to say. It is possible, but... It's supposed to be able to, like, knock the castle away. How, how, how it's knocking the uh, pins down, those pins there. Bang, bang. And I can try and get some sections knocked off. I'm going to cast a spell. You're never going to get the full word cast. We're doing rubbish, frankly. No, it's still good fun, though. And um, you got to remember, 8-bit days, um, as a pinball uh, game, this was pretty good at the time and, and did very well. Um, in fact, we went on afterwards to do the other obvious arcade um, game, which was... Uh, Boot Machine Simulator, which was uh, quite fun as well. Uh, we'll have to play that sometime. As with all um, uh, pinballs, every now and then it just decides the ball's off on its own and uh, doesn't really give the player much of a chance to interfere. Which actually is probably the safer way, because I haven't been doing too well so far. Um, so all the time the ball's in play on its own and sorting itself out, that's probably quite a good thing. Go on, ball. Fall down. An interesting uh, thing about when we were on the Spectrum is that uh, we used to, to uh, occasionally try to do something on the Spectrum or somebody would ask us about the keys and we didn't actually use the Spectrum much itself um, apart from actually uh, playing the game itself to test. to test because we'd uh, program everything on the Amstrad and then just port it across um, still using the Amstrad with its disk drive uh, and keyboard so we didn't know how to use all those funny shift and function keys that were on a spectrum which uh bemused so many people that we wrote so many games and we just didn't actually know how to type anything on a spectrum itself we you, we just used it for playing games like everyone else the only difference was there were our games and we were debugging them Ooh, oh. Nick, oh yeah okay oh, oh almost got that one up there i'm actually doing okay this time although i should never it's really hard speak. to get up that, to get around that shoot Really hard. Speaking too soon. Bang. Oh yeah, we have uh, knocked a few pieces off the castle now. So I don't know. Oh, and the f that's the first tree being knocked down. It must be flipping hard to uh, actually knock that whole forest down and get to the volcano. But as we said, we did put a, a little end game in there, which uh, I guess. Pin oh, pinball machines wouldn't really have an end game, would they? Mind you, that's the end of your game. <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, I didn't even get onto the score grid. Uh, you, you took that position. Um, but there you go. That was Advanced Pinball Simulator on, running on the Spectrum from 1988, 27 years ago. Okay, well, it was fun reminiscing about that one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you, and goodbye. Okay, thank you. Bye.